One of the things that I most love about philosophy is that it always gives me different perspectives, different lenses to play around with and dive deeper into the questions regarding the nature of reality and even challenge the very certainty of knowledge. In Principles of Philosophy, Descartes wrote that if you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt as far as possible, all things. It essentially means that if I want to arrive at the truth, and by the truth, I don't mean truth, capital T, but just my truth, uh, the truth of my life and my actions, then in my living of this life, I need to question everything that defines it, everything that I believe, down to the most fundamental facts, thoroughly examine their validity in my life. And philosophy lets me do that. I recently finished reading uh, Nietzsche, a complete introduction. So this is your teach yourself edition. I found this online and I decided to read it. And I read something in it, just about the revaluation of all values. That really got me thinking. In Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, he raises the question of why we want truth. Why not untruth? It is frequently the career of philosophers to seek for truth, and Nietzsche targets them for his main criticism. He believed the most important question should not be what is true or not, but the extent to which a belief supports life and maintains a species. When philosophers make claims to truth, they are merely presenting a preconceived dogma that tells you more about the philosopher's beliefs than, than anything to do with truths. Truths. Saying it so many times, I'm forgetting how to pronounce it correctly. It was Nietzsche who said, there are no facts, only interpretations. In Bertrand Russell's The Problems of Philosophy, now this book is all about challenging the very nature of such philosophical inquiries. Russell emphasizes that philosophy is not merely an abstract reality, but rather it's a tool one can use in order to navigate the complexities of knowledge to question it, to break it down and to consider it from different angles. I love how the book begins with the idea that much of what we think is certain in life is merely our interpretation and our perspective on it. So Russell really clearly makes a distinction between what is knowledge and belief and appearance and reality. Is there any knowledge in the world which is so certain that no reasonable man could doubt it? Russell also argued that what we perceive is a construct which is shaped by our preconceptions, our beliefs, our past experiences, our opinions about others and the world. And this echoes Nietzsche's assertion perfectly that there are no facts, only interpretations. Another thing that I really liked about this book is how Russell arrives at such philosophical questions, ideas and inquiries without drowning you in complicated jargon. Philosophy, at least for non-academic readers like myself, can feel quite dense and intimidating to dive into. Like We don't get the most straightforward answers from philosophy. It usually takes a lot of time. It takes time because philosophy, like philosophical texts, are like mazes of complex ideas and historical context. But this book, Problem, the Problems of Philosophy flips that narrative. It's so accessible and it feels more like a conversation rather than a lecture. Now, Russell has managed to distill very complex ideas and complex questions into digestible thoughts that you can sit with and think about. This is especially useful for somebody who, you know, doesn't have any prior philosophical knowledge. And the book is quite short too. It's less than 100 pages. Each chapter covers one facet of you know, a philosophical thought, like the nature of matter, the difference between appearance and reality, the limitations of human understanding, truth and error, the limitations of philosophical knowledge and the value of philosophy. At its core, Russell asks, what can we truly know? Are we justified in believing what we see, feel and perceive? And if so, to what extent? The way Russell puts forth certain philosophical frameworks and questions and ideas and just his approach really made me reconsider what I know about reality. Is what we perceive reality or merely a representation of it? If you've ever questioned the reliability of your own senses, reading Russell and just his approach and his mindset towards philosophy can really feel refreshing and thought-provoking. In another chapter, which is one of the last chapters in the book, uh, The Value of Philosophy, 
he argues about the value of philosophy so he says why bother with such abstract questions isn't philosophy just a series of unsolvable problems now philosophy really broadens your understanding of what you don't know and this relates so much to modern life because so any kind of certainty in this day and age is prioritized and prized above everything else and this book shows you what the consequences are of falling prey to such immediate gratification this also reminds me of two things the first thing it reminds me of is simon way um when she says that we cannot be sure of our knowledge unless we are also sure of our ignorance and of course her very famous line in her book gravity and grace attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity and uh, another thing that this whole the philosophy of morality the philosophy of perspective of knowledge of truth reminded me of uh, akira kurosawa's movie rashomon i have read the short story by akutagawa the story is essentially about a crime that takes place and there are four different people and each of them have has their own in you know perspective their own version of the same story you know i think this is that's a good visual format of this philosophy of truth the, and how interpretive and how subjective it is and that there are no facts only interpretations i feel like this could complement that story can complement this book and the ideas that are discussed in this book when you read this book you do realize that russell is a bit extreme in his opinions about certain things i mean he doesn't really present multiple perspectives or like multiple points of view uh about on the same ideas on the same questions but for a book like this i think it's because it's so short whether you are a beginner at philosophy or you're like you're someone like me who has read philosophy for some time it's a great place and so it's a great book to read because it does leave you with some questions it does leave you with something to think about and it certainly does help me think philosophically that in itself is a good reason to want to read this book the uncertainty of philosophy is more apparent than real those questions which are already capable of definite answers are placed in the sciences while those only to which at present no definite answer can be given remain to form the residue which is called philosophy This is however only a part of the truth concerning the uncertainty of philosophy. There are many questions and among them those that are of the profoundest interest to our spiritual life which so far as we can see must remain insoluble to the human intellect unless its powers become of quite a different order from what they are now. Has the universe any unity of plan or purpose or is it a fortuitous concourse of atoms? Is consciousness a permanent part of the universe? giving hope of indefinite growth and wisdom or is it a transitory accident on a small planet on which life must ultimately become impossible are good and evil of importance to the universe or only to man such questions are asked by philosophy and variously answered by various philosophers but it would seem that whether answers be otherwise discoverable or not the answers suggested by philosophy are none of them demonstrably true Yet however slight may be the hope of discovering an answer it is part of the business of philosophy to continue the consideration of such questions to make us aware of their importance to examine all the approaches to them and to keep alive that speculative interest in the universe which is apt to be killed by confining ourselves to definitely ascertainable knowledge